Fayetteville, North Carolina's J. Cole nailed his position in the rap game with his early 2019 hit, Middle Child. A student of hip hop, the evolution of Jermaine Cole's career tells the story of a man who thought happiness would come once the rappers he idolized became his peers. Success was all I needed. That's what was going to bring the happiness. Having people say, yo, you are the best in the game. I thought those would be the things that would bring happiness. And then when those things came, the, the happiness wasn't there. But along the way, he found that it wasn't all that simple. I'm giving niggas food, but the float is catered, yo. J. Cole got to start rapping on the now defunct message board Cannabis Central, going by the name of The Therapist. I couldn't wait to get home and write, uh, post this rap on, uh, online, you know what I'm saying, on some forum with some people who I didn't even know. My brain's packed with more lines than cane addicts. These insane raps just stay wrapped in a straight jacket. This is when I'm like 13 years old and I, I switched it to like, this real wordy, I was kind of trying to rap like cannabis and like Eminem, it was like real lyrical, real wordy, and punchlines. He began producing after receiving an ASR X sampler for Christmas. It was my first song I ever recorded was on my own beat. It was called The Storm. You can look it up on YouTube. My man Sean from around the way, some been down from day one. Never been known for mistakes, but was bound to make one. Her name was Nina. See, he was all about the cash flow till she came and had this man pussy whipped to the max, yo. He left Fayetteville, North Carolina to attend college at St. John's University in Queens, New York, willing to do what Whatever it took to produce for his idol Jay Z, even sitting in the rain. He's like, man, what is that? Like, what are you doing? I'm like, yo, this is American Gangsta uh, Beat CD. And, you know, I can't really speak. And he's like, man, I don't want that. Shit. In May 2007, he changed his name to J. Cole and released his first mixtape, The Come Up. On it was the song Simba, named after the main character from the 1994 Disney film The Lion King, detailing his plans to rise to the top. Word on the streets is on the prince, nigga, check the splendor. And I can't wait to be the king, nigga, young Simba. Word on the streets is on the prince, nigga, check the splendor. And I can't wait to be the king, nigga, young Simba. Another song, Dollar and a Dream, which would later become a trilogy, spoke of his hunger. A dollar and a dream, that's all the nigga got. So yeah. if it's about that cream, then I'm all up in the spot. I was raised in the F.A. Why a nigga never gave me nothing, pops left me. I ain't never cried, baby, fuck him, that's life. The hype around the come up put him back on Jay-Z's radar. Mark Pitts, who managed Big E and signed Chris Brown and Sierra, um, loved my stuff. And he played Lights, Please, the song I got for Jay-Z. Lights, please, lights, please. Turn off the lights, for now everything just seems so right And how you make the darkness seem so bright I'm feeling like things gonna be alright I got a call the morning of, and it was like, yo, today's the day, Jay wants to meet you In February 2009, Jay-Z made Cole the first signee of his brand new label, Rock Nation Jay was my mentor before I ever signed to him I studied his moves that much That on your neck is mine, original rock chain is yours in June 2009, Cole released his mixtape The Warm Up, which included grown Simba, doubling down on his ascendance to the throne. They keep on saying, Where you going, nigga? Going, nigga. Hey, it ain't no telling. Yeah, can't tell you where I'm going. You know, I won't stop. Goodbye to the bottom. Hello to the top. Uh. Cole also appeared on Jay Z's The Blueprint 3 on the aptly titled track A Star is Born. And could I be a star? The same in this game have to change who you are? Or could I be the same one who came from a faraway life just to make it in these Broadway lights? All eyes were on J. Cole for the first album from this promising young superstar. I'm young J. Cole's first single, Who Dat, was released more than a year after he signed to Rock Nation. The record failed to resonate, peaking at 93 in the Billboard Hot 100, pushing back the release of his debut album. Who Dat also taught me, like, how that radio game worked, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And that who that, a song like who that never had a chance, even though I was on there really rapping or whatever. To keep the hype going, he released Friday Night Lights in November 2010. The tape was well received. On Vilmatic, he frets about his yet to be released debut album. He's paying off tales, be paying off well. What story is my audio theater gonna tell? I know my debut was shit, but is it gonna sell? I guess it's in God's hands. On Blow Up, he questions if fame was really worth it. I'm blowing up and bitch, I'm still me. But what's the cost to live your dreams? Do you feel me? Everything glittering ain't what you think it will be. Funny how money chains and wits make me feel free. Friday Night Lights was an effort to stay above water. Long story short, even after Friday Night Lights, I still didn't have a release date. Because it was like, the game didn't know what they know now, that you could sell records without necessarily having a radio single. A radio single. He finally found a single that clicked. Work out, peaking at number 13 on the Billboard Hot 100. Hey, we got a good thing. Don't know if I'ma see you again. 
but is that a good thing? This girl, I can't be your man. No man. This, in addition to Can't Get Enough, cleared the way for his debut album, Cold World, The Sideline Story, for September 2011 release. It debuted atop the Billboard 200 and sold more than 200,000 copies in its first week. While it was a monetary success, Cole wasn't too proud of it. When I listen back now, some songs, 100% me, there's a few songs where I'm like, ugh, I hear it. Of course you wasn't making good music. Every time you was picking a sound, you was asking yourself, was it a hit? Sam. Cole also found out through producer No ID that Nas, another of Jermaine's idols, hated the single. I was in the studio with Nas and we was talking about you, man, and, and he was like, yo, why did he do that? Like, why did he put out that song? Don't he know he's the one? On his follow up album, Born Center, released June 2013, he explained himself to his idol on the track, Let Nas Down. Yeah, by my mind, I kept on saying, Where's the hits? You ain't got none. You know, Jay had never put your album out without none. And dog, you know how come labels are archaic, formulaic with their outcome. Born Center's lead single, Miss America, was definitely not built for the radio. Two chances, no dance with the devil, bitch. Overcoming the circumstances, we had the rich. Since you all in my business, is what I tell the bitch. One Center also included two top 30 Billboard Hot 100 hits, Power Trip and Crooked Smile. Around this time, Cole doubled down on his fan support with the first iteration of his Dollar and a Dream tour, where concert goers could see him for the price of one dollar. Trapital's Dan Runke believes that this tour is what set Cole up for the success he has today, writing, quote, The Dollar and a Dream tour showed that J. Cole's true fans would support him if he stayed true to his roots. Cole cited Jay-Z as a reason for switching things up. Jay-Z is the same dude that used to rap like this, but da 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 Reasonable Doubt was the most intricate shit, but he learned, man, let me feed it to the people better. On the streets of Ferguson, Missouri, outrage and anger. No justice! Protesters of different ages and races demanding answers in the shooting death of 18-year-old Michael Brown at the hands of a policeman. The August 2014 death of Michael Brown at the hands of Officer Darren Wilson affected J. Cole greatly. Are we all alone, fighting on our own? Please give me a chance. I don't want to dance. Something's got me down. I will stand my ground. Don't just stand around. Don't just stand around. In addition to visiting Ferguson to get a feel of what it was like on the ground, Cole began to see the impact his music could have. Because I could say one thing. If I'm speaking my mind and saying how I truly feel, right. I might say one thing that connects the dots for somebody that might have been the right connection that was needed to like do something, to change the that's world that, or something, you know what I mean? This event and a few other factors led Cole to look inward for his next album, 2014 Forest Hills Drive. The project reflected his shifting perspective after his years in the game. Do you wanna, do you wanna be happy? Do you wanna, do you wanna be Happy. My new album, 2014, Forza Drive, 12.9. Wow. Is that enough? That's it. Wow. That's enough? That's enough. That's That's enough. That's enough. <laughs> Forest Hills Drive sold more than 300,000 copies in its first week without a lead single or features. Or you might be Slick Rick with 19 chains, or you might be Drizzy Drake or Kendrick Lamar. But check the birth date, nigga. You ain't the guy. Nah, you ain't the guy. Nigga, the cold the guy. Cold the guy. Cold the guy. January 28th. On this album, on this story, I didn't need nobody else's perspective. You don't have to follow them rules. You can put out what you love and still sell records if you if you connecting with people. And apparently, he reflects on leaving his mother in North Carolina for his dream of stardom in New York. Think back to Forest Hills, no perfect home. But the only thing like home I've ever known until they snatched it from my mama and foreclosed her on a loan. I love yours. He raps about finding happiness and being grateful for what's around you. No such thing as a life that's better than yours. Think being no broke was better. Life that's better than yours. No, no such thing. Was better. No such yeah. thing. I wasn't happy when mad happy shit was happening to me. What is it that's holding you back from appreciating this shit? And it, and it was like ego. Is a 100% ego. J. Cole, not confident in his position, settled in and focused on his own life, came back in a December 2016 documentary which included two fiery tracks criticizing the music industry. False Prophets, going after Kanye West, and a culture's fixation with celebrity. There was a time when this nigga was my hero, maybe. That's the reason why his fall from grace is hard to take. That song wasn't about him. There's one verse that applies to him, for yes. sure. But if you listen to that song, that song is about celebrity worship. We're worshiping 
celebrities. And everybody dies, going at the new generation of rappers like Lil Uzi Vert and Lil Yachty. Bunch of words and ain't saying shit, I hate these rappers. Especially the immature eight week rappers, Lil whatever, just another short bus rapper. Honestly, I don't give a fuck. Hey, look, can I get, since we had this, I'll fuck with J. Cole, bro. Then he released his fourth studio album, For Your Eyes Only, meant to humanize people that have been villainized by the media. You're never guaranteed to be this high again. Yeah. So and while I'm here, mm -hmm. let me use this opportunity to say the, the realest shit, shit yeah. I have ever sure. said. Much of the album was through the eyes of a friend he grew up with. No time for that, ain't no looking back, cause I'm running too. I made it home, I woke up and turned on the morning news. Overcame with a feeling I can't explain, cause that was my nigga James that was slain, he was 22. Cole, recently married and with the new son, imbued this perspective into the track folding clothes. I wanna fold clothes for you. I wanna make you feel good. Baby, I wanna do the right thing. Feel so much better than the wrong thing. For Your Eyes Only went on to become a huge success, eventually becoming Cole's second straight platinum album without any features. But although it was working, making music in seclusion was beginning to get a little old. Niggas been counting me out, I'm counting my bullets, I'm loading my clips. I'm in April 2018, J. Cole returned with KOD for kids on drugs, filled with tracks meant to tackle the scourge of drug addiction. Power. Greed. Money. Molly. Weed. Perks. Sannies. Drug of them all. And the strongest drug of them all. Love. The tape resonated deeply with fans. He was like, bro, I just heard your shit. And he was like, I realize I'm doing the same thing that she was doing. Like, I'm this how I've been dealing with the pain. Like, I've just been numbing this shit. On Kevin's heart, he spoke about infidelity, a regular topic in his music, notably touching on the comedian Kevin Hart's actual infidelity. At home I look happy as usual. On the road on my Mac, I'm a chooser. I'm an addict, I'm masking it. Kevin's heart. But it was the final track in 1985 which made the most waves, once again addressing the younger generation. But this time, it was from a position of empathy. Man, they barely old enough to drive. To tell them what they should do, who the fuck am I? I heard one of them diss me, I'm surprised. I ain't tripping, listen good to my reply. Come here, little man, let me talk with you. See if I can paint for you the large picture. Cole had realized that his earlier comments against the younger generation of rappers may have been misguided. I know now that I was wrong. All I was doing was being afraid that the thing that like I fell in love with was like no longer like relevant. KOD was well received, breaking numerous streaming records, becoming his third straight platinum album with no features, by this time an already baked in meme. But J. Cole felt that it was getting a little old, saying, quote, all right, it's almost embarrassing now. Like, all right, man, y'all gonna make me put a feature on the album just so this shit can stop. In January 2019, he released the aforementioned Middle Child, affirming his position in between two generations of rap. Just left the lab with your 21 Savage. I'm about to go on me, jigger for lunch. Middle Child was a tremendous success, becoming Cole's highest charting Billboard Hot 100 single at number four. Child also served as a way to push him out of his comfort zone. Jay has self produced much of his own discography, and this time he shared the decks with Canadian Grammy winner T Minus. I probably made a beat in like five months, like I probably, <laughs> like five months, like so six months, get these bars. Yeah. The order of business was for more collaboration. In January, he invited dozens of rappers down to Atlanta for Revenge of the Dreamers 3. It debuted July 2019 at the top of the Billboard 200. Nothing new under the sun, nobody fucking with sun. I got a couple of sons, a couple of guns, a couple of niggas that bust up the party and fuck up the fun. Cole also continued his string of standout feature verses, each one showing a Cole that was coming out of the woods and back into the rap game, like 21 Savage's A Lot, a verse that would snag him his first Grammy in 2020. I guess I was hoping the music would speak for itself, but the people want everything else. Okay, no problem, I show up on every one album, you know what the outcome will be. He was also able to join a hip-hop forefather, the late guru and DJ premiere on September 2019's Family and Loyalty, with lyrics ever present for the situation. J. Cole, who the thought you would have been? Rhyming with ghosts, guru flows forever like a diamond and most. Could never afford the precious shoes, that's precisely why I'm blessing you. We click a messages. Jermaine Cole entered the rap game with a desire to be the best, thinking it would bring him happiness. From a young cub to a grown Simba, J. Cole's evolution shows us a man who studied the game and carved out his own place in it. I'm Jacques Morel with Genius News, bringing you the meaning and the knowledge behind the music. Peace. Bobby had Whitney, we was cooking up crack, but the 15 credits had a nigga off track. Picture that, 
Best rappers is Lil Wayne in classes. The best bachelor is Bruce Wayne with his bachelors. But master this rap shit. You hear the words coming from my lips, bastards. I never crack, I got that chapstick. I practice till that shit made perfect.